Good morning, Facebook Live. This is Robin Carbiato. Welcome to today. It is Friday, June the 2nd. We are going to have an amazing day. As you join in, be super hopeful and expectant. Oh my goodness, you're going to love this. Woo, you're going to love this. Hold on, let me get some scriptures up. Oh my goodness. God has got such a blessing for you today. Hey, Trisha. Hey, Dina. God bless y'all. Thank you for joining in. Y'all are going to super love today. God is going to bring so much strength and understanding to your heart and mind and cause you to move forward. Amen. Now, we're going to go through a considerable amount of scriptures. Hey, Layla, Kimberly, and Lisa. God bless y'all. Thank you for joining in. We're going to go through a considerable amount of scriptures, and it is going to so bless you. I'm going to bring in a little bit of healing of the soul back in 2012 and 13 that I taught on, and I'm also going to bring in the prophecy that God had me bring today on, I hear the Father saying, and a teaching behind it. Every time I post prayers or scriptures or prophecies, it is always scriptures all in posts, all in prophecies. It's just that I don't put the addresses up all the time. But I'm going to bring you one of the addresses today. And you are going to love this. And this is such a great day for you. Hey, Miss Donna, God bless you. Hold on one second. Let me get my one scripture up. I'm getting a couple of scriptures up. Thank you, Lord. Oh, my goodness. He's just got so many scriptures for you today. Woo! This is a good day. Amen. Let me get two more scriptures up that the Lord has, and you're going to be so blessed. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Oh, my goodness. Thank you, Lord. So, let us get started. Amen. We have just got tons of scriptures. I'm going to scroll the comments off, and I'll look at them later. Oh, my goodness. So, one of the things that God brought to me today to prophesy, and I hear the Father saying, was Isaiah 49, that your children will say in your hearing, this place is too narrow for us. But oh my goodness, this is for each and every child of God. Amen. And we're going to look at this through one of the teachings that I did. Remember God's firewall healing of the soul. I have three of those workbooks transposed into books on Amazon, but I've written already 24, and there were three more that I have to write in the series that was from 2012 to 2008, uh, 2015. And so I'm going to bring to you the dong gate, the poo, the stinky gate, okay? And we're going to look at it and understand the purpose of the dung gate. Remember in Jerusalem, Nehemiah is going through the city. It is destroyed. It is desolate. He's weeping, and now he's rebuilding the wall. And so, one of the gates that I introduce in God's fall healing of the soul is the dung gate. And God gave me a saying a really long time ago Satan has gone and dung it again. Instead of done it, Satan has dung it again. It stinks. Amen. Let me get, uh, I'm going to get the ancient Hebrew up as we look at that as well. So, the dung gate in Nehemiah is, we see it in 2.13, 3.13, 3.14, 12.31, and Jeremiah uh, and, and Nehemiah 1231. Those are the verses that the dung gate is in. And so Nehemiah 213, the first introduction of the dung gate of Jerusalem, and that's the gate kind of like the sewage gate. The sewage has to go somewhere, right? And so the sewage gate 
represents the stinky things in your life of the enemy's lies that have to be washed off by the washing of the word. And that is reviving and refreshing because eternal life in your members who is Jesus Christ is who you're focused on as you're focused on the kingdom of God, the kingdom of heaven and God's righteousness. Amen. One of the things that God just keeps having me study in relation to this new book is I reread another book for the book that I'm writing, The Forbidden Fruit, The Spiritual Disease, is again about consciousness. And you're going to see, especially in chapters two, well, even in chapter one, two, and three, all the first half of the book is focused on God consciousness and where is your attention? Where's your attention? Where's your heart? Whatever has your attention, your heart controls your intent. And Satan came after mankind's intent because he knew that the only way that he could rule in and upon the earth through the kingdom of the world and bring the tree of the knowledge of good and evil was through hijacking the intention of mankind. And that's what he did. And so we see in Nehemiah 2.13, the dung gate, the sewage gate. I went out by night by the valley gate toward the dragon's well and to the dung gate. Isn't it interesting that the dung gate is by the dragon's well? Oh my goodness, you have to know it is well with your soul. And the many-headed dragon, it's funny because it was in my memories today of Psalm 74, 13 and 14, that God cuts the heads off of the dragon. And those heads represent Leviathan, the message. Remember, Leviathan represents the power of the message, the counterfeit of the Spirit of the Lord, which the Spirit of the Lord, anytime you see the Spirit of the Lord, it is about the power of the message. And so the counterfeit of that is Leviathan, pride, the dragon, and that represents the counterfeit where pride tries to bring a power of suggestion, a message, to grab a hold of your heart and to lift it up and exalt it to where you're not humble. But don't you know, <coughs> and by the way, they're cutting the landscape outside. So you know what? That grass is growing too high. Those weeds are in the garden and God is going to get it out while we're doing this broadcast out of your heart. Woo! And he's going to level that grass. He's going to cut it down. We're going to be humble. Amen. I went out by the night, by the valley gate, toward the dragon's well and the dung gate, and inspected the walls of Jerusalem, which were broken down, and its gates, which had been destroyed. And so, as I mentioned earlier, Psalm 74, 13 and 14, that after verse 13, when there is verse 14, and I call it my barbecue verse, where God slices Leviathan in the wilderness and feeds him to the creatures in the wilderness. And so what that means is, you know what? What has been chasing you down, the hindrances in your life, because there's so many hindrances in our lives that cause us to resist the Word of God and truth where we don't take it into our heart and allow it to do a thorough work, Hebrews 4, 12 and 13 to come in with that sword of the word to go to our intents and motives where everything is laid bare before God. There is nothing that is concealed. Jesus, our high priest, sees everything. Amen. And so let's look at this dung gate and let's look at this particular word dung and let's look at the ancient Hebrew olive bet where the ancient symbols that are pre-Canaanite, pre-Babylonian, pre-Persian empire, that these ancient symbols look kind of like caveman language, and it's what the initial five books of the Bible, the Torah, are written in, and they form and create word pictures. So let's look at verse 13. Let's look at dragon, and let's look at dungate, because I just want to bring that dragon in here, and it's the same way that it's the same one that is used in Isaiah 35, I believe, as well as Psalm 74. Let me look. Isaiah, yep, Isaiah 35, and it's the same one, I believe, that is also used in, let's see, let's see if it's the same one that's used in Psalm. Yep, Psalm 74, it is the same word. So, you'll see in Isaiah 35, 
seven that there's dragons, but the Amplified Classic says the jackals, and it's the same Hebrew word that represents dragons, and it's that spirit that is just speaking constantly and won't shut up, but it's pulling on the pride in your members because your heart in certain areas is on the world, and so it's going to try to come in and exalt its lie up in your members, and that's why fasting and prayer is absolutely amazing, and you hunger and thirst for righteousness and are filled with that hunger to read the word, to know the word, and that's the humility, that's humbling ourselves, amen. And so it's also used in Psalm 74, 13, that God breaks the heads of the dragons. So let's look at this Hebrew word for the dragon's well, and it's tanin, and it means jackal, sea serpent, dragon, sea monster, well, uh, land monster, serpent. And it's composed of tav, noon, yud, and noon. So there's two noons, and they're divided by a yud. So let's look at these and get an ancient symbol, word picture, with all of these combined. So you first have tav, that's an X or a cross, and it means sign, seal, mark, and covenant. And then noon, it's a fish swimming through water, and it means life and activities. Then yud, an arm at work, works to make deep. And then noon again. And so the word picture you have is you are marked by the activities and works that are active in you. Now, just breathe because I'm going to unpack this. That dragon represents the works of the world in your members that are active and operative. And that's why Hebrews 4.12 says that the Word of God is a double-edged sword devised between intents and motives between soul and spirit. And so, as we eat the Word and the great physician does heart surgery on us by causing us to humble ourselves through fasting and prayer, we are able to perceive that which we've clung to where pride has been able and allowed to exalt itself and hinder us from receiving truth and walking in the power of the kingdom of heaven. So many people don't realize that they're hindered, that they're blocked. They don't realize why they keep going through the same thing over and over again, why they're not seeing the breakthrough, they're not seeing the blessing, and it's because they have part of their heart in this world and part in the kingdom of God. And so God allows the trying and testing, that sifting, amen, like Luke twenty two thirty one, with Peter. And as in 1 Peter 1, 6 and 7, that's why Peter wrote 1 Peter 1, 6 and 7 and 1 Peter 5, 8. The enemy is like a roaring lion seeking whom he may devour. That's indicative of the dragon's heads. The enemy that's speaking to your soul, that's trying to devour you. And if you think about a lion, what do you call a, a, the lion pack? The pride, okay? So that lion still represents pride in 1 Peter 5, 8. And 1 Peter 1, 6 and 7, do not think it strange these fiery trials that have come to test you and the suffering of temptations and the trying of your faith, which is more precious than gold, where we're down to your praise, glory, and honor when Christ Jesus is revealed. And so, saints, the dung gate is when you've got so much poo on you, you ain't taking it no more. I am not taking it anymore. And it's so funny because last, this past weekend, Rich and I rewatched one of my favorite kids' shows, kid movies, The, the Kid Who Would Be King, and it is based in England, and it's about a kid that I think that is in King Arthur's lineage. He gets Excalibur, but it's so crazy because the school he goes to is Dung Gate, and Rich and I were just laughing, and I've been talking about the Dung Gate in some of my coaching calls with individuals, and it's, you know, say, saying Satan's gone and dung it again, the poo. When the poo is all around you, left and right, God is going to cause you to rise up and say, Dragon, Leviathan, Pride, 
No more. I'm going to keep my eyes on God. I'm going to humble myself and seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. I'm going to believe God. Amen. I'm not going to get it through my own works. I'm not going to get it by the world's standards. Listen, I tell people this all the time, especially people that are in multi-level marketing are in their own business and they're trying to promote it. I will, and they try to promote it the way of the world. And I'll, and I'll say, Robin, th this is uh, showing me, they're saying to do this. They're saying to do this. No, Jesus only did what the father told him to do. He only spoke what the father told him to speak. Don't try to, and listen, promotion comes from the Lord. Amen. And so you have to be still and you have to let God promote you. Amen. Listen, in 2011, when I went into full-time ministry, there were people coming in, flying in, driving in from all over the United States to come hear me preach in South Carolina. And I had someone come in from Florida and they were with the uh, Church of Faith uh, church. And, uh, they told me, they said, Robin, you can ha preach at all the church of faith in the United States. And you're going to get $3,000 offering guaranteed. All you've got to do is do this and this in relation to, I'm going to support you. Just write the letter. I'm putting my name to it and all the doors will be opened. And I told the gentleman, I said, no, I do not promote myself promotion comes from the Lord. Amen. And so God exalts those who are humble in due time. He does, he does not exalt the proud. He exalts the humble. Amen. And so now let's look at this place about the dung gate. And let's look at this word dung and Hebrew and see the Hebrew letters that compose it. And so this dung gate is Ashpoth. That's right. Is spelled like A S P O T, an ash pot. I got ashes and I got a pot. I got a garden and I got a kitchen and I'm going to put ashes in my pot. No, the ashes represent the burning of pride. We see this at the time of Passover when it's the burning of the chametz, when they take out all the leaven in the house. And they burn it up. They have a barbecue and burn the leaven. Woo! Today's a barbecue day. Burning up pride. Woo! Satan's not going to dung it anymore on us. Because we're getting out of the poo. And we're getting out of the ash pot. And you're going to see in great measure, as I've taught on, and I've actually written a Watchmen series book on, 1 Samuel 2, 8. All of the Watchmen series workbooks which the first one that I brought out in book form is Rev 22.2 with Tesla. But the one that I wrote right after I wrote the Tesla one, which was the fifth one in the workbook form, was 1 Samuel 2.8, Can You Handle the Truth? And that is Hannah's prayer that you lift up the needy from the ash heap, from the dong heel. Okay? And so God gives you beauty for ashes. Amen. And so it's the burning up of pride that you're trading that pride out for God's beauty of holiness. Amen. Through humility. And so it's ash heap, refuse heap, dong heap, poo. And it uh, means rubbish and filth. Remember when I did refuse about a week ago where refuse makes you feel refused by God, but that's a lie of the enemy. That is the operation of pride in your members that wants you to rise up in self-pity and say, God is not for me. God does everything for everybody else. The only reason God is doing anything good for us is because of my loved one, not for me. Listen, I've been there, okay? But I recognize the enemy's plans. And so this ash pot is composed of olive, sheen, pay, tov. Isn't it interesting that you have the tov in there? Because it means sign, seal, mark, and covenant, okay? In the first one with the dragon, we saw mark, where the enemy has you as a target, but you have to resist the enemy, and guess what? He's going to flee. So, olive, the ancient symbol of an ox, it means strength beginning first. Sheen, the ancient symbol of teeth, like a W, 
consume and devour in the negative, and pay the mouth, word, open, speak, and tob, X or cross, sign, seal, mark, and covenant. And so the word picture that you have for dung is the strength of the word that devours the mark upon your members. What does that mean? It tries to come after you as its target. And you have to know that greater is Jesus Christ in you than he that is in this world because it devours, it destroys that yoke of oppression. It destroys the enemy's mark on your back. Listen, you've got to keep your eyes on heaven. It's not about knowing that Christ is greater in here in your mind. It is about knowing it in your body. This is where faith is. Faith isn't up here. This receives faith, but faith begins where Holy Spirit, your spirit man and your soul are, which is in the body. This is the power company. This is the apartment. My lights are on in here, but I am not the power company. The power company is about two miles from my house. And because there's power at the power company, I get power in my apartment. The power company is in the body. Holy Spirit is in the body. This is the apartment that gets the power. Amen. And so now let's look at Isaiah 49. Isaiah 49. But before we look at Isaiah 49, we're going to look at Psalm 118.5. Psalm 118.5. I'm going to read both the King James and the Amplified Classic. And so the Amplified Classic says, Out of my distress, what are you distressed with? The poo, the dung. <coughs> Satan's gone and dung it again. I am tired of this stinky mess. Okay, out of my distress, I called upon the Lord, and the Lord answered me and set me free and in a large place. Now let's look at the King James Version. I called upon the Lord in my distress. The Lord answered me and set me in a large place. A large place. So what does this mean? It means that the psalmist was in a narrow place. Amen. And so the distress represents being pressed in at the dung gate by the poo of the enemy. Like, oh, this dunk is crowding me, and it's so narrow. You need more than a car wash. You need the word wash to wash all that dung away so you can come into the broad place. Amen, because we're going to get to Isaiah 49 in a minute, which was one of the scriptures I was referring to in that I hear the Father saying today. And so let's look at this particular scripture of Psalm 118, Psalm 118, and we're going to look at a couple of Hebrew words and get some understanding. I mean, faith comes by hearing the word. So let's look at this word distress. I called out upon you, Father, in my distress, and that is mate sar, and, and it means something tight. It means trouble, distress, pain, straight. And it comes from the Hebrew word, so raw. I am so raw, God. I am so stretched. I feel utterly raw. My, have you ever been so sensitive, so raw? Even though it's got that sade. Yeah, it does have the sade. And that's got that tss sound. It's kind of like T and S together. Tss. Yeah, even though <clears throat> it's T-S-A-R-A-H, it sounds like so raw. So raw. Saul raw, and it means adversary. It means adversity, affliction, anguish, distress, tribulation, trouble. This sounds like First Peter 1, 6, and 7, and this comes from the Hebrew word tsar, and that means adversary, close, distress, enemy, narrow. You are squeezing me too tight. It means sorrow, straight, tribulation, and trouble. So let's look at the Hebrew letters that compose metzar, which is the Hebrew word here for distress, from which narrow comes from tsar, 
and Sarah. Metsar is Mem Said Resh. Mem is a three humped looking M and it's water. And it means to flood. It means massive, but in the negative, it means chaos. And then we have Said, it's a fish hook and it means catch. It means desire and it means need. And then Resh, R E S H, a man's face, it means head highest person. So the word picture for Metsar, for narrow, is the chaos that is caught in your person. Hello! The chaos that is caught in your person. Why is there chaos? Because you don't know your identity. You are without form, which in Hebrew from Genesis 1-2 means also confusion. When you're confused about who you are, guess what? You're in the narrow place where chaos ensues because all the dung around you is speaking how bad you are, how you're not worthy, how God is not for you, how everybody's better than you. Look at them. Look at the Joneses. They're doing better. They're blessed. No! No, 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 no. God is saving you. His mercy is keeping you here. Because he knows if you get here, that your eyes will be fixed on the things of the world and you will start backsliding and the world is going to be in your heart and you're going to be of the way of the world and you're not going to know it. Many Christians are in the world. Look at their language. Look at their behavior. Look at how they act. <clears throat> look at what they do. They look like the world. We are not to look like the world. We're to be in the world, but we're not of it. Amen. We're a city set on a hill. So let's look at now the main scripture. And before we get to the main scripture, I want to do this word, the large place. That he brings us into a large place. Look at it this way. Be, being in one of those studio apartments in New York on the main area, it's probably like $2 million for like 500 square feet. If even that, I've even seen them 345 feet. Talk about being narrow, right? And then all of a sudden you move out of that and you move into a penthouse that's the whole top floor of a building. That is what it's like, the narrow place where you feel like everything's closing in on you Whereas the broad place, like you can <sighs> breathe, amen, and that is revival. Why? Because you repented, and because you repented days of refreshing, and that word refreshing in Acts actually means revival, reviving, amen. And so this particular word for broad place, roomy place, is merhab, merhab, and it means enlargement. Who does this sound like? What? Oh my goodness. Is this not blowing your mind? Oh my goodness, Jabez. And Jabez's name means sorrow. And we see Jabez in scripture. I think it's 410. Let me make sure. It is in 1 Chronicles 4, and it is 10, 4.10, 1 Chronicles 4.10. Oh, that you would bless me indeed and enlarge my territory. Why? Because his name meant pain. His name meant sorrow. He was tired of being pressed in and reminded of his mother's pain at his childbirth. And he said, I am tired of that. I don't want to remind, that is not my identity of what happened at my birth is not my identity. I know God's blessing, which is in Deuteronomy 28, 1 through 14. And he's going to bless me in the city, bless me in the field, bless me going in, bless me going out. Blessing, blessing, blessing. That is my identity. <laughs> Amen. And Jabez knew that. Amen. And so let's look at this particular word, broad. Mechab, and it means enlargement, breath, large place, room. And it's from the Hebrew word Rahab, 
which means to grow wide. Oh my goodness! What? No, 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 no. Yes, 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 yes. I am just, uh, I am heaven church. Excuse me while I praise my God. Woo! Woo! Oh my gosh. Why am I going crazy? God gave me all these, God told me what to speak on when I got here. I took Rich to work. I went by to get my boys uh, lemon squares at Edgar's Bakery this morning. We're celebrating their birthday tomorrow morning at Cracker Barrel. And I went by a fresh market to get my tea that's on sale and to look for Fontina cheese. But on the way to drop Rich off at work, there was a car tag that was L-I-Z-W-D-E. And this morning, before I took Rich to work, I was posting Isaiah 49 in that prophecy. And you're going to look at it where I said, your children will say in your hearing, this place is too narrow for us. We want to live. That's the narrow place coming into the wide place. And I even talked to Rich this morning. I said, you could not pay me to be a kid today. It is horror. It was bad when I was a kid. And that was in the 70s and 80s going to junior high and high school where I was bullied. You could not pay me to be a kid today. And all I could tell Rich was these children have got to come out of this narrow place and they've got to go into the broad place. So the car tag on the way to taking Rich to work, dropping him off, and doing my errands on the way to his job was L-I-Z. And he has a sister, Lizzie, and I have a sister, Liz Ann, which they both are Elizabeth, which means house of God. But behind the cart, L-I-Z, and I'm going to post it today, behind L-I-Z was, guess what? W-D-E. W-D-E. Let me ask you. What do you think? I think W-D-E means, and God had me, God prophesied to me to prophesy this morning. Your children are coming out of the narrow place and they're getting into a larger place, a broader place. They're crying out to live. That's the scripture that was going in through my mind as I posted that today. What do you think it means? W-I-D. It means what? And this word, y'all, I could not have done this. This root word, Rahab, for large place, means wide. Make wide. Y'all, that car tag, because Elizabeth means house of God. That God is about to make his house, his people, in the wide place. Where do we see this in Nehemiah 8? They were at the water gate. As Ezra the prophet is reading the word, and it's the Feast of Tabernacles, and they're standing before Ezra, and five times in Nehemiah 8, it says they had understanding. The word was being etched on their heart. They heard it. They fell to the ground. The priest had to encourage them, look, this is the time of feasting. Don't weep. But the word pierced them. The word penetrated them. Woo! Hallelujah. And God brought a great grace to bring them into the place of abundance, of a broad place, as they stood in front of the water gate at the broad place. We are at the car wash today, the word wash. We're at the water gate in the broad place like Nehemiah 8. Woo! That dung. Wash, 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 wash. It is dung gone. It is dung gone in Jesus' name. Woo! So these three Hebrew letters for wide are resh, man's face, head highest person, cheb, chet, it's the secret uh, inner chamber offense, it means secret place, and it also means to separate and then bet the house. What? Oh my goodness. The most high is in the secret place of his house. Woo! He's about to do Isaiah 54, and that was in 
my prophecy today, Isaiah 54, enlarge the curtains of your habitation. Woo! Hallelujah. Strengthen your cords, lengthen your states. I didn't put those two parts in, but I put enlarge the curtains of your habitation. A wide place, a broad place. Hallelujah. Woo! Rest, shut, and bet. The most high is in the secret place of his house, and he is just bringing it all in. Hallelujah in Jesus' name. Woo! Now we are at our main scripture. Amen. Oh, my goodness. Here it is. It is Isaiah 49, 20. I've taught on this scripture many years ago in a workbook, and I absolutely love this workbook. And this was the scripture that was going through my mind this morning as I was doing the prophecy. Amen. Y'all grab a hold of this. This is for you and your house, your family. Amen. The children, well, let's just start and woo. Let's just start and verse. Woo. Se 16. Oh my goodness. I've got the anointing. I feel it. Woo. Woo. Isaiah 49. Verse 16, and 16 means marriage covenant. Behold, I have indelibly imprinted, tattooed a picture of you on the palm of each of my hands. Woo! You're so important to God, he tattooed your name twice. Not once, but on each hand. When he looks at this hand, he sees you. When he looks at this hand, he sees you. Woo! He sees your house. He sees your children. Woo! Aren't you glad you showed up for church today? Thank you, God, for June the 2nd, 2023. Amen? And the Lord, uh, behold, I have indelibly imprinted, tattooed a picture of you on the palm of each of my hands. O Zion, your walls are continually before me. Walls represent the soul. I've written about this in a book. Are continually before me. Your children... And your builders make haste. Your destroyers and those who laid you waste go forth from you. What does that mean? God's lifted his standard, Isaiah 59, 10. And the enemy is scattered. The enemy is gone. And your children are making haste. They are waking up. They're about to get on in the call of God. They're coming into the kingdom. They're going to move forward. They're not going to be hindered. They're not going to hesitate. They're going to run. And they're going to build Woo! Your children are going to build. Hallelujah. Does it, doesn't that bless you? Your children and your builders make haste. Your destroyers and those who laid you waste go forth from you. Lift up your eyes round about and see the returning exiles ready to rebuild Jerusalem. All these gather together and they come to you. As I live, says the Lord, you, Zion, shall surely clothe yourself with them, with your children. We see this also in Isaiah 54. Woo! All you shall surely clothe your... Uh, let me just start all over. Verse 18 is just too good. Lift up your eyes round about and see the returning exiles ready to rebuild Jerusalem, your children. All these gather together and come to you. As I live, says the Lord, you, Zion, shall cl surely clothe yourself with them as with an ornament and bind them on you as a bride does. For your waste and desolate places and your land, once the scene of destruction, surely now and coming years will be too narrow to accommodate the population. And those who once swallowed you up will be far away. <clears throat> the children of your bereavement, born during your captivity, shall yet say in your ears, This place is too narrow for me. Make room for me that I may live. Woo! Hallelujah. Do you understand this? All you have to do is put your children in the hands of God. And no, you're not Holy Spirit. You're not Jesus Christ. And you are not God. And you can't force anything. Holy Spirit, hallelujah, will come upon them. 
as we fast and pray and get out of God's way and allow Him to work on our heart and humble ourselves and watch them come into the kingdom with favor, going out to do the work of God. Woo! Your children, verse 20, of your bereavement, born during your captivity, and they shall say in your ears, this place is too narrow for me. Make room that I may live. Woo! Let's see who this is. Let's see. Is this, is this your child? Yes. Hallelujah. Grab a hold of it. Right here, it says, <clears throat> this place in the King James is too straight, too narrow for me. Give place to me that I may dwell. And that Hebrew word for place is makom, and it means standing place. It means to stand. It means room. It means space. It means a home. It means a spot. It means locality. It means let God show up and show off in my life and let him cause me to stand and to be established. The Hebrew letters, are you ready? This is the car wash, not just for our car. Woo! Hallelujah. But as you get your car wash, woo! The dung off of you, hallelujah, by the washing of the word this morning, your children are going to get the car wash. Woo! Mim, kuf, vav, and mim. You got two mims in here. Mim, that's that three humped M. And the positive, it means massive, and it also means flooding. And then kuf, the back of a head, last follow, as well as a sun on the horizon rising. And then volve a tent peg, a nail to add and secure. And mim, that is again the flooding and the rising. Watch this. Are you ready? The massive flooding that has been added to you as you are washed. What? As you are what? Living waters. Woo! Your well is not stopped up anymore. It is well with your soul. The dragon's cut off. Hallelujah. And you are rising up as God exalts those who are humble. And he exalts your sons and daughters. And they move into the promises of God. They are set free and delivered. In Jesus' name, amen and amen and amen. God bless you. I love you. Have an amazing Friday.